Good evening, everyone. So um, just short on announcements, just a reminder that we have uh, uh, Sunday worship. Uh, again, another baptism. I know it's hard to believe, but we've had a, had a big string of baptisms lately. And so uh, we welcome you, uh, knowing that wherever you are, uh, that uh, Grace Indeed meets you here uh, where we are. So please rise as you're able. We welcome you in the name of Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. In baptism, you were clothed with Christ and were claimed as a beloved child of God. Remember God's love as you hear the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God is our light and our salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting. We praise your name, O God. For with you is the fountain of life. And in your light we see light. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God, of our salvation. That the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun. And may the poor be lifted up. Let us sing together our opening hymn, Build Us Up, Lord. We pray, holy and gracious God, rich in mercy, full of kindness, out of your great love, you raise us up from sin and death and make us alive together with Christ. Write your word upon our hearts and restore in us the image of your love, that by your spirit, our way of life may become the way of Christ, through whom we pray. Amen. You may be seated as we sing the Holy Evening Prayer. Day is almost. 
side of the congregation, you will sing with the Philites, and you guys get to sing with me.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Our scripture reading tonight comes to us from 1 Peter, the second chapter. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture. See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe he is precious, But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are chosen, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called out to you of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and exiles to abstain from desires of the flesh that wage war against the soul. Conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles so that though they malign malign you as evildoers, they may see your honorable deeds and glorify God. When he comes to judge, for the Lord's sake, accept the authority of every human institution, whether of the emperor as supreme or of governors as sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to praise those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing right, you should silence the ignorance of the foolish. As servants of God, live as free people, yet do not use your freedom as a pretext for evil. Honor everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Slaves, accept the authority of your masters with all, the, all deference. Not only those who are kind and gentle, but also those who are harsh. For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By the wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Word of God, word of life. Brett Blair writes, brave enough to take it. There's a story uh, told uh, out of Persia about a general who had strange custom of giving condemned criminals a choice between the firing squad and the big black door. As the moment of execution draws near, the spies are brought to the Persian general who asks the question, what will it be, the firing squad or the big black door? One spy faced with this dilemma hesitated for a long time. It was a difficult decision. He chose the firing squad. Moments later, shots rang out, confirming his execution. The general turned to his aide and said, they always prefer the known way to the unknown. It is characteristic of people to be afraid of the undefined. 
yet we give them a choice. The aide said, what lies beyond the big door? Freedom, replied the general. I've known only a few brave enough to take it. I want you to know that on the other side of the door, we call Christ. There is freedom. The freedom and forgiveness from your sins awaits. Be brave enough to take it. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue to walk through the book of 1 Peter, we hear tonight about this, this freedom. The freedom that we get in Christ. But how many times do we take advantage of that freedom? I mean, in all reality, how many times do we take advantage of the freedom that we're given? I think too many times. We take too many things for granted. Uh, we hold on to stuff forever and a day. Uh, we hold people um, to their actions uh, or hold judgment against them for all time. We, we, we forget to give this thing called forgiveness that we all have also been forgiven, right? I mean, we teach this in confirmation over and over again uh, when it comes to the Lord's Prayer that you can't ask God for forgiveness if you're not willing to forgive somebody else. That's kind of wrong, right? I mean, think about that for a second. If you, if you sit there and you want God to forgive you, how can God forgive you if you haven't forgiven somebody else? If you keep holding things over their head, right? It's not right. How many times do we hold grudges? Anybody hold a grudge over somebody? Maybe still? I had a boss once and literally for 20 plus years, 20 plus years, she held grudges over coworkers that worked for me. They would be outside taking their break. Well, you know, Mike, they're taking a little extra break time. And I'm like, well, you'd only know that if you're taking the extra break with them. But since she was the director and I wasn't the director, I couldn't tell her that. But for 20 years, she held grudges over those same people. How healthy is that? Is that very healthy? No, it's not. Do you know what happened? In her early 60s, early 60s, a young woman died of a massive stroke. And I know that that part of her problem was holding on to these grudges and not setting people free. Not setting people free. We, 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 we put people into a camp. We, we put them into a category and, and, and we just want to hold on. And, 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 and no matter what they say, no matter what they do, for whatever reason, they can't ever be right. But what if they are? How many times do we go into something where it's prejudged? We ever do that? Maybe once in a while we have an idea of, of what this is going to be like or what it's, what's going to happen. And then, oh man, that was nothing like I thought it was going to be. It wasn't that bad. Ta-da! Why do we do that? I know that I've short, shared a story with you about a pastor uh, colleague of mine. I, I, I only know him because I met him my first time that I went to Luther Seminary to see if it really was Luther that I wanted to go to. And here he was, you know, he had his biker vest on. He had the biker sleeveless shirt on. He had his earring in his ear, you know, his little goatee and everything else. He was a second career guy. And I know that the people that were with me were like, this is the guy that's going to be a pastor and he's giving us a tour of Luther. Is this really the place I don't want to be? They didn't get to know him and his love for Christ and his willingness to go out into the world and share the gospel, because I can tell you that Randy could go into places that I would not be welcome. Why? Predisposed judgment. And that's what Peter also is talking about here when, when he's talking about the chief cornerstone that was rejected. Jesus was rejected by the people of the day. Because he was ushering in a new idea, a new kingdom, a new way of life. 
and they didn't, they didn't understand it. Or they didn't want to understand it. They created their own tunnel vision and said, oh, he's just a rabble rousey. He's just like that prophet John the Baptist, and we know that King, King Herod got rid of him. Why is it that as a human race, as a human condition, the first thing that we always look for is the bad in something? The bad in something. And this goes back all the way to King Solomon when he was building the temple, when he was allowed to build the temple because David, of course, wasn't. His son Solomon was given the idea and the the understanding. He was given all the plans, all the layouts to build this incredible facility. And one stone that showed up, this is the legend that's there, one stone showed up and it didn't fit. It wasn't like the other stones. And so they threw it down the hill. Gave it no time of day. They called the designers, they called the people and said, hey, we're missing this one piece. Can you send us the chief cornerstone of the building? And they said, we sent it to you years ago. So they hurried down the hill and had to bring it back up the hill to finish the completion of the temple. How many times do we get caught in that same mode? That we cast something or someone off because it's not what we think that it's going to be, but it turns out to be better than what we think it's going to be. So the question is, do you cast Jesus off as a cornerstone of your life? And your faith and your understanding of who God is and what he's bringing into the world? Or do you accept him? And he is the rock and he's the foundation of everything that you build your life upon. Because he suffered and died. He took on literally everything for you, including death, death on the cross. Can we just cast that away? Or do we use that as the foundation of who we are and who God created us to be? That's where we are on this journey of Lent, my friends figuring out who this Jesus is, what he means to our lives and what we're doing. As First Peter talks about, is he the cornerstone? Is he the foundation on which you build your trust and your life? Or like the builder so many years, did you cast him away? The choice is yours. I can't make it for you. As for me, though, <laughs> I know what I've already chosen, and it's him, day in and day out. Without him, I'd be completely lost. Amen, and thanks be to God. Together we will sing, if you but trust in God to guide you. Oh,
knows very well the fears we face. Sing, pray, and keep God's ways unswerving. Offer your service faithfully. Trust heaven's word, though undeserving. You'll find God's promise true to be. It's our confidence in thee. God never fails in time of need. We continue with our holding evening prayer service. The light shines in the darkness.
us comfort us all of our days keep us hold us gracious God great and merciful God source and ground of all goodness and life give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I want to say thank you to the Philites. Uh, to Lanny and Lisa, thank you for coming tonight and helping us uh, to lead worship. Let us bless our God. May God creator bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever Just like last week, we'll collect offering out in the entry. <laughs> 